You can't open the news without seeing something about climate change. Even the central banks are talking about how they can help fix climate change. So you know that this is front and center everywhere in the big corporations, in the governments. And of course, this will affect our daily lives because of the rules and regulations that they are working to implement today. They want to get to something called net zero by the year 2050. And I'm going to show you how all governments seem to be playing ball. We're going to look at the potential solutions that they're suggesting. Is it real? What are the alternative energies? What is the world powered by today? All of that here. You came here for the truth. So let me unveil that for you. I want to cover what's going on with energy. Obviously important. Everyone needs it, but we need to look at this at a deeper level and understand it, you know, really from a holistic point of view. We don't want to just have the talking points. Let's go right here. When you do a search online for net zero 2050, this is what you'll see. People are asking, what does net zero emissions by 2050 mean? Net zero. This is, you're seeing the, the, the common thread right through. If you look at some of these links, of course, depending on where you are, your geolocation is going to depend on the search results. The, the point is, you're going to see every website, every single institution, United Nations, all these other ones that say the same thing. Net zero by 2050. Net zero by 2050. All of them, they say the same thing and they have decided that this is going to be what they have to achieve okay so the governments have come together and they've made it very clear this is our objective net zero by 2050 all right so it's not zero it's net zero so they have to offset that and what we can see here is as i'll show you looking at it you know, governments around the world, um, they're basically, for the most part, committed to that. So that blue, it's hard to see, obviously, really small font. But you're looking at that light blue area on the rainbow part. Well, that's all the countries saying, yeah, yeah, 2050, we agree to it. So basically every country. Okay, so you got me so far? Pretty much everybody is saying that. A few others say they'll get it done earlier. All right, good. But what powers the world as of 2022? Well, coal. Coal, 35%. Nuclear, 9.2%. And others, you know, you have solar, you have wind and so on. Well, that's an issue because you've got these countries like India, like China, and many others in Asia and elsewhere that use coal now if we think about it where is all our stuff coming from well it's from those countries where's all the growth coming from no it's from those countries so if everybody in the united states is using solar panels and let's say nuclear that doesn't fix the issue because the growth the manufacturing, the pollution that's being done in these countries. So everybody has to be playing ball. Now they say they'll play ball. I believe for China, it's 2060. But the point is, are they going to be able to achieve what they're suggesting? And that is really, you know, up in the air between now and then there's going to be 10 different recessions and different excuses why they can't get on it. You as an individual, though, will you be able to do everything that you do today? Or will you be restricted based on this net zero by 2050? Oh, you, no, no, no. You, you can't drive that gas guzzling vehicle because we'll never get to our 2050 goals. Do you think that's possible? Do you think they might suggest that? Or maybe you're allowed to do it. But of course, you have to offset that. And you can simply do that by paying a fee, paying a tax on your carbon emissions. Some would say this is a theory, that this is not possible. But of course, we know that to be the case. In many ways, they're already doing so. 
I've shown this before. The world must accelerate the construction of new nuclear power plants in order to hit uh, the global green goals, says Atomic Watchdog. 20 reactors need to be built a year to reach net zero by 2050, compared to about three to four reactors a year currently. And that's where they're at right now. Way off. So that's what he's saying, nuclear. All right. Well, 40 years of nuclear power production in every country. I'm going to show you this. You can look down the list and just compare that graphically to see for yourself. Now, some countries more than others, some countries started using nuclear at a later time, uh, but you could see it overall here on this chart, okay? Nuclear is being used, as I've said, it's about 9% of the total energy usage, and what they're saying is there's absolutely no way 2050 is going to happen without an extreme, like they got to be fast, on nuclear. Why am I telling you all of this? Because at the end of this video, I'm going to highlight again what I told you three years ago that would have been um, an investment that you could have made that would have you know more than doubled. So let's let's look at that though. Anyway, so nuclear is here, but nuclear has its own issues. Nuclear power plant leaked 1.5 million liters of radioactive water in Minnesota. Here's a list of historical leaks and spills at U.S. commercial nuclear power plants. Looking down the list. Everywhere. This happens. Small ones, medium ones, larger ones. You have Fukushima, of course. It could happen for different reasons. And there's a different half-life on these things. And they say, no, it's not harmful. It's this and that. Fukushima is totally fine. They dumped the water, uh, radioactive water back in the ocean. It's not an issue. Okay, great. So you can believe who you want to believe. That's, that's besides the point, okay? So these things are not perfect. There's no question about that. You could see the age of these nuclear reactors. And depends on where they are and so on, all these things. Uh, but what they say is that 88 of 92 reactors in the U.S. have received extension to operate for up to 60 years. So does that mean as they age, uh, they're going to leak more? Is that what we can expect? It's possible. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, into this field. But just from what we're looking at, you could see this, that they are, you got something that's, you know, intended to design, you know, intended to be operated for 20 to 40 years. And then they're going to do that for 60. You know, that's worrisome. Looking at this example, Canadian nuclear plant leaked radioactive water right into the uh, drinking water, Lake Ontario. Uh, but it, it was okay. The government said it's, you know, it's not a problem. It's just, a, you know, uh, it's a yeah, low-level regulatory event. I guess, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Fukushima, they're just basically talking about that. And what happened there, 2011, devastating of the tsunami, um, creating a, a big issue. And so the thought is, do they need to be using uranium? Uranium is this, you know, it's, it's something that could be powering a city, but at the same time could cause devastation. And so it's really like handle with care, right? I'm always reminded of the Homer Simpson uh, having those, uh, the rods, the, uh, rods and i i just think of you know the the danger associated with it but when i look at this here they start talking about in this article thorium which is something else that is still needs a lot of development the reactors we have today are not based on that they talk about the advantages of it it creates a lot less waste it's much more like a lot less threatening to everybody it's great energy that comes out of it it's everything is great about it there's just one problem though why aren't we using thorium hmm let's think about that for a second well what can you do with um uranium hmm well you can make a nuke with it thorium you can't so the money went all into uranium there's different reasons for that but that's the one that I want to highlight. Take what you want. 
with that. They've got this, which could be beneficial. You can see small modular reactors. And so you can see the top left one that looks like the Homer Simpson type you're used to. All right. Large conventional reactor. And then we have these small modular reactors. So these are like, you know, they don't need to be in the middle of nowhere. They can put them closer to the city. And they have, I think, about one third the energy capacity of the others. But you can put them anywhere. And so that means you could start having these contribute to a large percentage of the energy in a given city. And then they have the uh, micro reactors, okay, really, really small buildings, and that would be able to, you know, power a few buildings and so on. So those are options, and we'll see what happens. But I wanted to highlight this. Several generations of reactors are commonly distinguished. Generation 1 reactors were developed in the 1950s and 60s. The last one shut down in the UK in 2015. Generation 2 is uh, by the pre present US and French fleets, most in operation elsewhere. Generation 3 and 3 plus, you got the advanced ones, okay, and so on. And so what we need are the more advanced ones, the ones that aren't leaking, the ones that are new in operation, and the ones that are potentially using thorium okay if they decide that that's what's better um but right now they got nothing okay we got the old stuff the old stuff is being dragged on because they know they got an energy problem this is bad it's going bad and uh, from bad to worse and so we'll see what happens but if the government is willing to put more money into this technology what do you think happens well of course you have to follow the money this is Cameco. And if you remember specifically, Cameco was this company that I highlighted back in 2020. And you could see the chart for yourself looking at it, let's say a year ago. Okay, from a year ago, it's up 60%. I was highlighting this back in and you'll see right here. Uh, 2020, somewhere in this region over here, when commodities were going up, I started talking about uranium, and you could see where it has gone from then. So let's say about, you know, $13, $15. Right now it's at $52. This happens to be chemical. It's just the biggest um, in the uranium space, but not just that. I mean, I said uranium in general. Look at chemical, of course, just because it's the biggest. Um, but that's what happens now from here on of course when you have a run-up it's difficult to say okay well you know this is going to go up forever usually not the case but when we compare this to the other miners other metal miners and things um actually uranium uh might not be a, a bad pick there's other things to think about in that it's not just one aspect anyway but the point is you've got the ways to play it and so you can see that uh, with this physical sprot uranium, where they're actually buying the uranium itself, or you can get the you know companies that are involved in it. And so the physical operates a little bit differently, obviously, but you can see performance has been very nice as well. And so the point here is, I was talking to you about that years ago, not because of some sort of crystal ball that I have, trust me, no crystal ball. It's not here. What we do is we look at the fundamentals. And I break these things down. Anybody who has the, you know, the will to stand my voice for 10 or 15 minutes will get the full deal and explanation and the method to my madness. Those who leave early say, I don't get this guy. It's because they just don't have the will. The point here is that what we can see right now is that billions hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars could be going into nuclear energy to get to the net zero 2050, which, in my opinion, doesn't have all the altruistic you know, aspects that they suggest. I think there's more going on here. We, I could talk about that. But anyway, what I see here um, was a potential back in 2020. And, you know, you got to judge for yourself if now's the right time. But Looking at it, there are different ways to play it. I just see this as like, hey, if the government's going to throw money in it, you got the wind behind your back and you could be taking advantage. At least we can position ourselves in this way. You don't want to be fighting an uphill battle, usually. Okay, that's just the way it goes. 
Okay, and then what we got to look at is this, which is the places to find and connect with other like-minded people. And in this case, I'm just highlighting one case here, which is the comment of the day, but also where I would love to see you. And that is on the Discord, because you're going to see comments like this with one individual talking about how they were growing potatoes, trying to simply take like 10 pounds of tomatoes, turning into 100 pounds of tomatoes, doing things to be prepared, lowering the cost of living, potentially increasing their you know, their health by actually growing their own food instead of buying it elsewhere. It sits on the shelf. They spray it with the chemicals. You know the deal. Anyway, we're sharing all this kind of stuff every single day in the Discord. I'll put the link in the description, but I want to see you there. And I want to know what you think. And we could talk about the things that we cannot talk about here on this platform. So I hope you appreciate this today. I know it can be long-winded, but I do get to my point. If you do agree with that, that I do eventually get to it. Might, I'm, you know, the presentation might take 10 or 15 minutes, but I do make sense in the end. I want to know. Or is it just me thinking that? All right, let me know in the comments. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.